Hey, Tony here from Bikeberry. It's good to see you. Guess what we got? F-Zero. Pretty awesome. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through and unbox. Then we're going to do a full assembly. A lot of people have questions on how the forks are assembled. So I'm going to go through that in really nice, tight detail that you're going to get excited about. And you're going to know exactly. Not going to have those questions run through your head. Which part goes where? Not going to happen here. So remember, like, subscribe, comment below with any questions that you may have. You know the drill. Excited you're here. Let's roll. Since this bike is mostly assembled, we really don't have that many things to do on it except for make sure that everything is tight and functioning properly. I mean, you can see they even got this disc, you know, rear disc brake all ready to roll and all that, your gear on there. So that's pretty cool. I'm telling you, they even got the chain tension pretty close. So, but we're gonna go through everything and check it just to make sure. Let's go over and look at some of the parts that we do have here though. So we do have a front brake caliper, a couple brake levers, cable, we've got our seat, seat post, a couple brackets, pedals, some front end, a triple tree, hardware, and then our handlebars really. And our lovely triple tree forks. I'm pretty excited, this is so cool. I've been wanting to uh, get one of these assembled for quite a while and get it up here on the channel. So a natural place to start assembling the bike is get the big stuff done first. That means these triple tree forks. You can see that they're really well built. You know, they have a shock system in it. They have the mounting for the brake, all that jazz. Let's roll. Let's look at all the parts for the triple tree fork. This is what I call the brass knuckle that goes on the top after you put it in the headset here, okay? Then is all your miscellaneous parts here. We got the bolt, the screw, the bolt head cover. Uh, this is the part that you, for final assembly, put on the top of it that holds everything together. You got your bearings. And then you've got kind of like these beauty rings, a little gasket. You know, this is your bearing cup, you know, part that holds the bearings in and then another, what I would call beauty ring, okay? There's an order to these that we'll put in and I'll show you how to do it exactly. So let's start with the order. As you can see, this is a beauty ring. See how it's shiny on this side and then it looks, you know, like the inside of something? Well, that's because it is. So you want to take this first ring and you want to put it on here like that. It's going to seat low right here. See how that is? Then we're going to take our bearing ring. See this side of it with the race? I'm going to take that and put it on this way, but first, what we'll do, it already has some grease on it, but what we'll do is we'll put some of this on here, as we've done in our other videos, okay? And work it in there, put the race side, that side, towards here. Then the next will be all of these parts in the correct order. But first, we'll get it right into the frame headset. So you have this bracket here. That's going to go towards the front. It's going to go just like this. Okay, let's get a head-on shot here so that you can see the layers of how everything is positioned. First, what we're going to do is grease our bearing just like we did the other one. We're gonna put the, you know, the race of it, this side of it. We're gonna put that up like that, okay? Then the next part we'll take is this part. See it? I'm gonna put it right in there like that. 
Next up is this part. See how it's kind of tapered in where these notches are? Those are gonna go down. That's like a seal. Then the next part is gonna be this beauty ring. See it? It's gonna go like this. Then we'll take our brass knuckles here and you can see that they have like a chrome shiny top and a bottom. And we'll take those and we'll put those on. Then this guy holds everything together. Drop this bolt in. Now I like to use the socket hex keys. They work really well. So after you've gotten it assembled, move it back and forth like this to make sure that you don't feel any sloppiness or you know any movement at all. It's nice and tight and it moves freely. Then you'll be good. And we got our final part here. It's this little cap. And it just fits in the top of your Allen bolt. Like that. Next up is the handlebars. These are very different than most handlebars. They're gonna be one on each side and you can see it has this like multi-clamp thing with the same 3 16 uh, you know, Allen bolts in them to stick with a rounded end. Very cool, very sleek. And so the way that I like to put them on is this side out towards the front. You may have to make sure that everything's loose because may not be. I just push it right down on top of it. Kind of leave it loose until you get the other one on. Here's the other one. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of snug them up so they're not flopping everywhere. Just one, one bolt's fine. Just like that. All right, so next up is the seat. We got the seat, we got the post. We're gonna assemble the post in here first because we don't wanna drop it down in the hole of the frame. And as you know, we're gonna tighten it down until the post doesn't wanna fall out of the holder. If you look at the other side, it has like a carriage bolt square head underneath there. It holds it from spinning. All right, it's not moving, so I think we're good. In here like that, we'll just start there. That's a good place to start. So on these brackets, you can see it has a really large headed bolt and a nut. The bolt goes on the outside of the seat. So we'll take it apart like this, and you're gonna put the bolt through the seat, this on the inside. Then you can see this bracket is set up wide open. So you're gonna have to bend here and over here to make it accommodate your seat position. I'm gonna go ahead and use a crescent wrench as my bending tool. All right, we'll get this where we want it. I'll open that up just a bit. You can see I had to squeeze it really tight just to get the nut started on there. But once it started then we're good to go. So we'll just do this. Be good. I'm not going to go crazy tight with it yet. I want a little movement so I can get the other side on. And for the other side. So one thing to pay attention to is there's a curve in this on one end and straight on the other. The curve goes up into the seat. So See that angle? That way. So that the bar goes out this way. All right, let's get this guy on there. 
Now we got our cable to deal with, so pay attention to that guy. But it shouldn't be a problem. We can run it to the outside if we want, so it's not getting caught up in the wheel. So one thing you might have to do is use pliers and squeeze this so it's flatter because sometimes it's hard to get the nut on the other side of it. That was a lot easier. So on some of these, like the seat, I'll take my crescent wrench, but I'll actually use an impact drill to speed up the process. So I'll make sure I get that there, there, and then just like that. Nothing crazy, but speeds up the process. So now while I'm back here, I'm gonna go ahead and just like look at all the nuts and bolts of everything and tighten it up to make sure it's good before we move forward. Let's move our way forward with the pedals. As you can see, they have a left and a right. Spin that around. So the left side has a reverse thread. Normally it's righty tighty, lefty loosey. This one's lefty tighty, righty loosey. I use my shaved down crescent wrench. See how it's thinner? Put all this kind of close quarters, this close quarter wrenching. We'll just reach through the other side here. Okay, so far what we have is we have our rear wheels attached and I checked all the bolts of everything, the brake and all that. We got our seat on. We need to put a little air in the tire, but uh, we got our pedals on. Yep, our seat up here on. We tightened our seat clamp, so it's good. Next, what we're gonna do is, oh, we've got our handlebars on. They're not tight yet totally, so don't feel comfortable with them yet. Uh, really is to assemble the front end. So here we go. As you can see, we got a uh, plastic cap here that's on the forks. So we gotta get rid of that. So you can see that it has a front brake on this side. Loosen up the nuts on both sides. Get the washers out of the way. And we'll fit it right into. All right, so if you're new to the bicycle world, you can see that this has a hook on the end of it, this washer and it fits right into that hole right there. See that? That way, if this nut comes loose a little bit, it is going to keep your front wheel from falling off. That's cool, huh? So first thing you have to do before you tighten it is make sure that this wheel is centered between the forks. So I just hold it with my hand like this, and then I tighten it See how I can, you can eyeball the distance on both sides? From center line, down. So while holding it with my left hand, I'm gonna take and tighten this one with my right and start to get it pretty centered and snug. All right, so I got both sides just kind of snug, not crazy tight, just kind of snug. And then I'm gonna double check in here, make sure the distance is good and it's in line with the rest of the frame. And I'm pretty happy with it. Okay, so next up is the caliper brake. If you've never put these on, they're really versatile and really meant to be uh, fine-tuned. So they have these kind of curvy washers that allow it to, once you tighten down, to pivot, you know, and it's kind of its place. Uh, you can see that the brake pads are in here. So there's a stationary side and then there's a movable side. So you can see um, this outside part is the stationary side and this inner part is the movable side because this, I'll move it and you can see how it's closing. 
It's cool. So we want to get the disc close to this one. So then this can press against it. And but most of the time it's like this side stays, this side moves in towards it, squeezes it and releases, but this side stays. And it's just real tight tolerances, but they're pretty flexible. They're nice, they're reliable. As you can see, this is where your cable goes through. This is where it tightens down on, so it pulls that lever to do its job. So this is a position that you're gonna mount it in. You wanna check and make sure that there's clearance for the rotor part right here to go in here, for the disc to go in there. And other than that, just bolt it on. So that part goes to the inside. That way your bolts, Allen bolts can go on the outside here. See why a ratchet with Allen bolts or uh, Allen bolts is so much easier. So I highly recommend getting a set of these. The standard and the metric. That way you'll have them for everything. Okay, and you're gonna tighten those down so they're snug. Like that. Now this is kind of wiggly on here. So you're gonna push it in enough so that it you know, is where it's gonna seat. So it's kind of snug. So tightening it up, what you're doing is you're looking at those pads, those red pads, and making sure they're flat against the disc. And then you tighten it up. So I'm just gonna go for snug, because I think it's in the right spot. I'm not gonna go crazy tight, just snug. And then we'll run our cable. A little test that you can do is to lift the bike up and kind of spin it and listen. So one thing that we'll do when we motorize it is we'll do a dual brake lever on the right side. That way with, with the throttle, that way we can get our clutch on there. But for now, we're just gonna ride the bike and test it out. I'm gonna put both brake levers on for the front and rear uh, that came with the bike. So let's do that next. As you can see, there's uh, the bolt here. I'm gonna put that down so it's like that. We'll go right about there. See if it's the same size. Yep. Almost all of these are 3 16 X. We're gonna start there. Yep, so that one's on that side. That one's on that side. Looking cool. Just gonna spin everything around so that these are all in line okay and i like to twist them around the opposite way Cable's going to be fed through that guy. Nice. And down into your brake. So I make sure everything's tightened all the way down. So for the final thing, what I'm gonna do is tighten up the handlebars, because remember we left them kind of loose. Uh, I'll adjust the rear brake, and other than that, we'll air up the tires and let's go for a ride.
Yep, so what I'll do over the next couple weeks while I'm waiting for my engine to come in is I'm going to make sure that everything is running in tip-top shape. Uh, the bike is completely working in every regard the way that I want it to. Then when I go to put the engine on, I don't really have to worry about the bike. So, let's roll. 